So the service is done, we've finished. Uh, what have you done? Um, well, we've done a standard service on your wing. Uh, so yeah, we, uh, we started with the Prosti. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all great. We then hung up, checked the leading edge, uh, checked the top and bottom surface. Yeah. Trailing edge, all the line tabs, all the seams. Yeah. Uh, we then went on to check the lines, mm -hmm. um, as we explained before, and uh, we found... A there was a couple of things that needed attention, like yeah. a damaged sheath that we pulled out. Exactly. Uh, so we replaced, replaced, those, replaced the, the damaged brake line and um, took it down and uh, pretty much just did the line measuring. Mm -hmm. And of course, they needed some, uh, some extra loops for the trim. Yeah. Remeasured that, and now it's uh, where it is now in trim and beautiful and pretty and cool. awesome. When a client brings a glider in, um, they get a summary of what's been done and notes about the service and all those things, isn't it? Sure. So, this is the trim report that we produce every time we do a, um, a full measure of all the lines. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this sets out um, what we've found as a summary. Uh, at the top here, this is showing you roughly what the glider was looking like before the retrim, mm -hmm. and over on the right, it's telling you what, what the profile like looks like now. Mm -hmm. um, and then we describe at the top here, um, try to summarise exactly what uh, what Theo's found on your glider. Mm -hmm. So it was out of trim, um, and I've commented here that the central part of the wing, the rear lines had shrunk more than the lines at the front of the wing. Uh, so if you imagine that makes the nose a bit up <clears throat> mm -hmm. and it'll make the glider fly more slowly and reduce performance on bar as well. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you a little bit more of the detail towards the bottom of the form in a moment. Um, and then I go on to say that after retrim, the wing's now well within trim. Uh, and the cautionary note is you may find it launches more easily than before. So you might find it shoots over your head where before it naturally held back a bit. Mm -hmm. And the speed at trim will be a bit faster than it was before. Um, you may well find the handling's a bit sharper as well than it was before the trim. Mm -hmm. So these graphs here, there's a blue line <clears throat> that shows you where the average of all the measurements for all the A's is, all the B's, all the C's and all the D's on the right. And that's, and that's the variance of in millimetres of where they are compared to where they should be. Exactly. So you want everything on zero, right? So, there's right. N so there is no difference. Exactly. The ideal would be something like this. This is actually pretty close to ideal because the line is almost flat along the zero. Mm -hmm. uh, but you can see here there's a tendency on both lines <clears throat> for the wing to be higher at the front and lower at the back. Mm -hmm. This is an average across the whole wing. We have more detailed graphs that we use when we're trimming. Mm -hmm. And those more detailed graphs show that that's high at the front and low at the back is, was much more pronounced in the centre of the in wing the section, than yeah. the tips. Mm -hmm. These red parts here, the red parts of the bar, show that the worst A was almost 20 millimetres long relative to the reference point, and the worst C was almost 20 millimetres short, mm -hmm. and the measurements to be within spec have to be within plus or minus 10, mm -hmm. uh, which is in the blue zone. Okay, so the size of the blue zone is the variance within, say, within the A's or the B's or the C's. And if it's more than 10, it goes even to red. So yeah. it's kind of like error bars yeah. that you see yeah, on exactly. scientific papers and things like that. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Down here at the bottom, <clears throat> well, there's a bit in the middle of the report, which summarizes the loops that have been taken on the Malons. Mm -hmm. Most of the adjustments that we make when we trim can be done at the Malons by adjusting the loops there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have to go into the upper cascades to make loops, but in this uh, circumstance, in your glider, we didn't have to. Mm -hmm. On the left here, you can see that DL is telling me that double loops were used across the whole of the glider. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it was before, and then afterwards, um, they've changed to a variety of different ones. LF is a lock's foot, PH is a pile hitch, and these ones here you can see actually are single loops. Mm -hmm. so, so the glider came with double loops because if you have a double loop you can go both up and down. Exactly. Um, because there are 
loops that make it shorter or if you go to single loop makes it longer? Yeah, so by moving from, uh, on this uh, chart here, the ones in dark red are the ones where there's been a change and the light red shows you ones where there's no change. Um, so you can see that on the Stablo line, they were double loops and we've let them out to single loops and that's effectively lengthened the Stablo line by nine millimeters. Uh, you can see, for instance here, the left A1 was a double loop and it's become a pile hitch. Um, and that has effectively shortened that line um, by almost two centimeters. Down at the bottom here, uh, there's a vast chart of numbers. Um, the key thing you're looking here for on the detail ones is to make sure that you can see that none of them are bigger than plus 10 or smaller than minus 10, mm -hmm. and all of them are within. So those are the variances after retrimming. Mm -hmm. And these here are the specification lengths that we were measuring to. Mm -hmm. Up at the top, you can see here that it says that uh, the line overall after retrim is 16 millimeters shorter than the manufacturer's specification. Mm -hmm. And that's not untypical because generally speaking, line sets shorten, they, they shrink in, mm -hmm. uh, in use. And then the other information over here, you can see that we've also measured the brake um, cascades, uh, all the detail of them there. We've identified that the left brake cascade um, was 23 millimeters long relative to the line set and the right was 35 millimeters long mm. and we've adjusted that so we've shortened them slightly more on the right than on the left and um, 12 millimeters more on the right than on the left um, and by doing that we've brought them into symmetry and also into alignment with right, the right, yeah. uh, line set as a whole. Mm. So that means that <clears throat> after doing all that work, these graphs here show that the um, deviation from the manufacturer specification is pretty well on average next to nothing. Mm -hmm. And the range of variations Small on individual points. lines is now well within the plus or minus 10 range. Cool. Oh, thanks a lot for that, John. Good. <laughs> I, think there's a, I think there'll be a lot of people that will appreciate the actual technical thing. I definitely would. And you can't find that anywhere else. Yeah. Okay. So, um, no, you're very welcome. That's good. So okay. I think it's also the type of thing that people can watch it once, get a rough idea and watch it again and go like, oh, I get it now. Because I think I had to watch to see a few things to then be able to, oh, now I know a lot better how this relates to that and whatever. So we could do, obviously, 10 videos on different things, but at least as a start. <laughs>